So in today's video, we're going to be comparing the DS10 Drum Shaper, which is a um, transient shaper uh, alongside the Transient Master, which is also a transient shaper. I've had the Transient Master for a long time, a couple of years, and uh, the DS10, I've um, just bought it uh, for a Black Friday, so it was half price, very cheap. I think it was $25 at the time. So they're both quite cheap plugins, uh, both worth using. They kind of do the same things. The difference, I think, is really that the, the DS10 Drum Shaper is branded as a drum shaper. You know, it's for drums, really. And you can see here that you've only got three kind of presets uh, that you start with, which are kick, snare, and the bus, which I would assume means drum bus. So, yeah, so basically, and when you click the kick, you will say here, tightness. So you've got these three different algorithmic settings. You've got classic, natural, smooth. Classic is kind of like uh, a sharp, sort of pumpier sort of um, setting. Natural is kind of toned down a bit more of a smoother setting. And smooth is very, very smooth. So it has kind of like a curve in terms of the volume shape. In terms of this one here, it would be more like um, something a bit more punchier. And click on snare, that, that thing changes to body. And then you click on bus, and this thing sort of changes the presence. So what's happening here is DS10 focuses on tightness for kick. It focuses on the body for snare, which kind of makes sense. But you do want, you do have the option, sorry, no, you don't want, you have the option to increase the, the transient as well. And similarly, it, it focuses, the, the algorithms process focus on presence for bus. Okay, so let's just start with kick. I've got a kick track here. There's nothing affected on the, the bus group. Uh, I've got no uh, other effects on, and there's nothing on the master. But let's just go and listen to what it sounds like without any effects. I just put it on now. So if you just increase the attack under the classic algorithm, you can just see it's increasing the volume of the transient. If you just change it to natural, it actually increases it quite a bit more. I'm not sure why that is, but that's fine. And then smooth. Smooth is the smoothest, kind of roundest sort of thick, uh, sound. Just go back to classic. And what we'll do is got, you've got this gain knob. We'll just get the gain, bring it right up. Everything sounds better when it's louder, doesn't it? So let's uh, increase the attack. So you've got this really, I mean, go to the maximum setting, you've got these really sharp sounding attack because that volume of that transient has been increased. And then you'd want it somewhere in the middle, depending on how the the thing fits, fits in the um, mix. And obviously you can reduce the attack. Most times you wouldn't want to do that, but sometimes you may want to because you might have a harsh sounding kick. And the sustain button will increase the volume after the transient. So you can see there that the volume after the transient, I mean, you've still got some transient increase, but it's after the transient it gets increased. And that's the, the highest level. We'll just listen to natural. And it gets smoother under the smooth setting. And then you've got attack. So the combination of sustain and attack, you may want to reduce the sustain on the sound. Let's go there. And you may want to just go mental and just increase it like massively. And then you want, at that case, you want soft clip. So it gives you kind of like that distorted effect sound. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's a pretty simple uh, plugin. Now you've got this kind of mysterious, let's get, take soft clip off. You've got the, kind of got this mysterious uh, thing here called Mojo. Now Mojo is something that is, I'm not even sure how to describe it. It's kind of gives the song that bit of extra Mojo. And the best way to show it is to let you hear it. Not actually sure exactly what it's doing. I think it's just increasing the transient just a touch more. 
It actually doesn't sound too bad. It sounds pretty, pretty nice, and it feels like it's adding some saturation to the, um, and that's probably what it is actually, some saturation to the um, kick. So that's enough kick for now. So let's now apply uh, apply the transient master, and you'll just notice pretty quickly that it's going to do the same type of thing. And this smooth button, I believe, is the same as the algorithm. It just smooths out the shape of the attack. Let's have a listen. Similarly to the DS10, it's got a gain knob. I mean, it doesn't sound that great, actually. Just take the limiter off. But once you increase the attack, it sounds pretty sharp and nice. But you can hear, you can actually hear some clipping there. There it is, you can see the clipping. You click on the smooth button. And okay, so the limit there is the same as the soft clip on the DS10. So it's pretty much doing the same thing. You're not going to, um, you're not going to clip, but you're going to have a soft clip. What I really like about Transient Master, and I think it's better than the DS10, is the sustain. You could just hear more of it once the sustain is up. In fact, let's just go back to the DS10. Let me just compare the sustain under Classic. So you can hear there, it's kind of, look, get rid of the mojo. You can hear there that it's not as obviously, it's not as obviously impacting as the Transit Master Sustain. It's much, much louder. Let's get rid of the attack. Let's listen to it again, compare it. So it's definitely doing a bit more than the DS10. But the DS10 has kind of a cleaner sound. We'll listen to it with a soft clip. And we'll compare that to the soft clip of the DS10. The DS10 is much sharper sounding. So I think where the DS10 wins is if you really want a sharp, sharp kick sound, that wins. But if you want better sustain, you want to hear more body, I think the transient master wins. So it's kind of like, what do you want? <laughs> so that's fine. So let's that's enough for the, the kick. And we're going to now just have a listen to snare. So once again, we'll just take all the effects off the snare. We'll have a, a quick listen to the snare without any effects. It's not the best snare, but that's that's the whole idea. So we can shape it. I'm going to bring both of these effects into the snare track. So we'll just start with the DS10 and we'll click on snare. Just bring these back to zero so we can have a listen. Take the soft clip off. I've got the gain up, but that's fine. So let's listen to the sustain extra. With a soft clip. A bit of attack. And a bit of mojo. Get rid of the attack. Get rid of the sustain. Increase the attack. Soft cliff off. It's clipping a bit, but it's fine. I think there's a bit of reverb here. That's fine because they're, they're both going to sound the same. So that's cool. So let, let's listen to the same thing with the Transient Master. So we'll just take the limiter off. Once again, you've got much more body on the sustain. The attack isn't as sharp, but it's not too bad. Yeah, so I think it kind of does the same thing, really, with the snare. It has a much, much bit fuller body. 
Let's just increase, maybe I should uh, <laughs> do it a bit more justice by increasing the sustain by using a natural mode. I think you can get a really good snare from this. I think the sound of the snare is good. Let's, okay, let's now apply it to the uh, clap, clap track. Take the effects off. So there's a bit of extra body in the sustain that you actually don't want, but you can control it through the sustain button. Put Mojo up. It's interesting actually, I think the snare. So let's just listen to the clap under the kick mode. Yeah, it sounds like it's picking up more on the sustain bit. So let's just go to the transit master. No, it's not. Transient master definitely picks up much more on the sustain element. Okay, so let's now try it on the bus. Try both of them on the bus for the drums. Let's go here. Let's get all the drums going at the same time. Terrible drum track, but I guess it's just here to demonstrate what I'm trying to do. So we just get the um, limiter sustained down a bit. Maybe it's picking up too much on the on the bus. It's very tight though. Once you get down, once you reduce the sustain, it's really tight. And that's it's a really nice option to have. Okay, so let's listen to the bus sound here. Let's go to the bus. I mean, that sounds really nice. Actually, the drum bus sounds really good. Slow this baby down. Whoa, that natural <laughs> really gives it a bit of a pump. Yeah, I mean, okay, let's finish this tutorial. <laughs> um, so basically what I can tell really, and I haven't done this before, I'm really glad I've done this comparison with you guys. Um, what I can tell here is I think individually, um, the Transient Master is the winner. I think in, on individual tracks, especially the snare and the claps, which require a bit more sustain and body, just, I think it has a slightly more easier interface to understand. Um, so I think it's kind of the winner there. Um, I think I'd play around with the DS10 a little bit more, but for now, Transient Master does pretty much a job with less knobs and just easier to understand, to be honest. Um, and it, you can you can clearly hear a difference. But the bus on the DS10 has some incredible, I don't know, something really about it. That, I mean, I just just playing it just now in ten seconds, I can tell that I would rather rather use the drum shaper on the bus. So I think actually the DS10 could be more of a time saver when it comes to drums because you can you've got these three different algorithms, you've got more control over attack and sustain with, over those different algorithms. You've got this extra mysterious mojo uh, plug, and I think. Instead of tweaking and spending hours tweaking the tracks, you could just just drip this, you know, just slap this thing on the uh, on the bus and make it sound amazing. 
And actually, that might be the way to go. What we haven't done is tried the Transient Master and the DS10 on the other tracks, like a bass um, vocal. I've got another video um, for the Transient Master and showing you how that sounds on bass and other um, things. I'm not going to bother with the DS10 because it is a drum shape. It's designed for drums. So I'm actually thinking Transient Master kind of wins but um, on non-drum tracks. But other than that, yeah, I think DS10 is definitely worth the purchase as a effect on a drum group because it did sound magic. <laughs> well, on this drum group, it did sound pretty magical. Uh, you may want to experiment with it um, on other tracks. But if you're looking for sort of a Swiss Army knife, Maybe Transient Master is the way to go if you want. You don't want to buy two of these types of plugins, but they're pretty cheap, so it might be worth your while to get two. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys and girls. Um, any comments, any questions, feel free to DM me and uh, I'll try and answer the best to my ability. So all the best. Have a nice Christmas. Bye.